pattern uh, proposed here. Followed by status PM. Then mesosphere. Is it like that? Correct me. Then thermosphere. Like that? Thermosphere. So this break is known as thermopause. Then this is mesosphere, mesosphere, pulse, then thermosphere, followed by exosphere. And this is also called ionosphere. <coughs> that is what we study this one. This troposphere extends from to what? Uh, High 18 kilometers. So this layer is not a uniform layer. You see, so this is equator. This is equator, and this is 40 degree. So it is at a height of 18 kilometers. Then there is a certain fall of 2 kilometers, then it comes down gradually, gradually, gradually to 7 kilometers at this point. Oh. Like this, this is a sloping surface. I am talking about trop troposphere. Huh? So, troposphere is the layer where maximum concentration of gases, water vapor, aerosol. Maximum concentration. So, because of this concentration, you know, so the temperature variation <coughs> creates atmospheric motion. Atmospheric motion. So what is the temperature variation? You can go point, point by point. Huh? So you can remember it. Easily. You know, tell me what is the temperature variation? It says starts with 30 degree, goes up to minus 60 degree. This is the temperature variation. I have to read it. Huh? So much angle, why don't you go that side? But there is light. Now, so, the temperature drops, you know, at a rate of, can you tell me how much? So, over 18 kilometers it is uh, 9 degrees. So, nearly 5 to 6 degrees centigrade per kilometer. This is the drop of temperature. Understood, na? So nothing to explain you know, in this matter because you know your geographic classes, school geographic classes. Now, if because of this reason, the upper troposphere is very cold or tropopause. Very cold. So the water vapor cannot cross it. Water vapor. Remove it, yeah. So, water vapor condenses, creates rainfall, creates rainfall, and higher snowfall. Now, why water vapor
extensional because the vapor is lighter than the dry air. Vapor is lighter than dry air. <coughs> See, is giving it. So something like this, you know. I'll draw it. Yeah? Even on your little bit, please tell me. These are very easy points, you know. I will explain some of them, but you write down. Things are very easy. When little discussion is necessary, I will definitely discuss. <coughs> so see, giving a graph where it shows. This is the graph between altitude, altitude in kilometer and this is atmospheric pressure, atmospheric pressure in kilogram per centimeter square. The weight of the atmosphere over a centimeter area. Up to this have come now. Now, see, right here one, this is zero. So, at sea level, this is one, it will go up, this is nine. And water vapor. Let on the air <coughs> ten. Dry air, can you explain this graph? This is water vapor. Wet air, alright, wet air. <coughs> so, what is on this atmosphere? What can be? Dry air? No, yes, yeah. atmospheric pressure. Atmospheric pressure is expressed in kilogram per centimeter square. Like this, you know, if you take a air column, say from 500 kilometer, 0 kilometer, here per square centimeter, per square centimeter of the area, the weight of the atmospheric column is 1 point something 0, 3, 4, you know, kg per <coughs> centimeter square. This is for dry air. But this is little less. This is little less. This is dry air. The wet air is little less. But as you go, the wet air becomes lighter and lighter. You don't understand this point. Huh? Why? Suppose you have a dry air. And you do wet air. Wet air means what? Any <coughs> thing it becomes wet. So which is lighter this thing? The wet layer is lighter, having so much of water vapor, or the dry air is lighter. Sir. Huh? Wet air. Wet air is lighter. That is what you should know, you know. Even though it has a lot of water vapor in it, it does not make a wet substance or a heavy substance. It becomes further lighter. If it contains ice particles, it will be further lighter. So addition of water into the air makes it lighter, not heavy. Ab dekhe hongi garmi ka din mein why the clouds goes up? Cloud means what? The water vapor. Why it floats in the sky? It floats in the air. Why it floats in the air? Because it is lighter. No, understand this part. That is why 
see, I do this part. Suppose there is a hill here, and this is the ocean. You know. This is the ocean. So during summer season, water vapor goes up. Why it goes up? Suppose this is boiling. This is boiling or evaporating. Because the water vapor is lighter, that is why it is going up. Na? Oxygen is lighter definitely. What about carbon dioxide? Is it lighter or heavier than air? So, do you have any chemistry? Carbon dioxide is heavier. So, it is collected by you know, inverted flask. Oxygen is put inside the water. If it is lighter, it goes off. You know. Like that, you know, water vapor is lighter than the dry air. That is why the water vapor goes up. So follow this point. And it forms cloud. It forms cloud. So what is cloud? Cloud kya hai? Is it water vapor? Or it is water particle? Or it is ice? What is cloud? Cloud kya hai? Cloud is water particle or ice. It cannot be water vapor. Water vapor is invisible. You cannot see it. It has no color. But cloud has so much of white color, you know, white and dark. Because what? They are water particles. Or the ice. Very tiny water particles are there. Depending on the height. Depending on the height, if it is 2.5 km from the surface, if it is 2.5 km from here, you know, you will get ice in the cloud. If it is little less, you know, it is water. And below you have water vapor. So you cannot get a water vapor <coughs> at the surface. A cloud on the surface. So water vapor rises and it condenses. Say around 2.5 km or 2 km, you know, it condenses into water particles. It forms cloud. Have you ever climbed up Himalaya at some point of time? During rainy season, you should go once. See, below, you will find a lot of drizzling. When, while you are climbing Himalaya, you know, below you will find a lot of drizzling. Very small. But slightly you go up, no drizzling. Thick cloud. Thick cloud. They are all floating. You know, water particles are floating. Very tiny water particles are floating. That is the cloud, you know. And if you go slightly above, the water particles will vanish and ice particles will appear. They will be clinging to the hills. That is why if you go to Himalaya, you will find the ice covered hills at the top. There are a lot of cloud there. There are a lot of water particle bearing cloud there. You to follow this point. So cloud is water particle or ice. There is no water vapor there. So condense kar ho jata. They are so tiny, you know, they are so light, they float. This point, na? So cloud is what particle? S2, not vapor huh? or ice. Right. So this cloud, when it forms, you know, so you are blocking it. Your mountain band is suppose 3 km or 4 km, you know. You are blocking it. It's standing there. You are not allowing it to pass into the inside continent. You are holding it there. So holding the base, what will Either it will fall or it will climb up, you know, because of its low density or lighterness, it will climb up. It will not climb very high. It cannot climb much also. Because it is becoming colder and colder. So it will drizzle. It will rain. That is why on the hillside, you get so much rain. So it cannot cross it because of height. So here, no rain. You understood this part of the Why so much of rain occurs on the western side of Western Ghat or the sea side of the Western Ghats? Because of this disease. The water vapor comes from the sea, condenses around 2 km or little less to water particles and drizzles down. Here ice formation cannot take place because hills are not so big. But if this cloud is allowed to go to Himalaya, like you know from Bay of Bengal. The cloud is allowed to go to Himalaya. 
they are giving the chance you know, to climb up further, 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 you know. So it can go up to 3 km, 4 km. So ice particles form. So snow uh, cloud hills you can see in those areas. Understood, na? So this curve says dry air is heavier, wet air is lighter. That is why the water vapor rises. The lower cloud, you know, over the sea rises and creates them. So understand this part. So its density is therefore less. Now, why do you use it? Because of the vapor, you know, because of the vapor, you know, it dries up, it goes out. Otherwise, it will never dry, you know. Because it is lighter, that is why it forms water vapor and goes out. So your kapda becomes dry. Otherwise, it will never dry. Because it is lighter, that is why your cloth is drying up. If you wait, you have to And evaporation takes place at every temperature. Even at 0 degree centigrade also, the evaporation takes place. And it is, since it is lighter, so it climbs up. Okay. That is why the troposphere, the cloud rises and creates air flow. You know, understand this part. See, remember, the air having water vapor is lighter than dry air. Because of less powder, because of this water vapor, rainfall happens, then storm happens, cyclone happens, cyclone happens, because of temperature variation, the temperature variation, wind flows, so all these phenomena happens in the troposphere, remember. But if you go to stratosphere, all these things will cease. Because the atmosphere becomes thin here. If you go to a stratosphere, the atmosphere is thin. So this temperature variation will not be so much. There won't be much cloud also there. There won't be much temperature variation, atmosphere is thin. So you will not find neither rainfall nor climate change, all those things are not there inside the stratosphere. Okay. Now, we will see how the atmospheric circulation takes place in the subsequent classes. We will just write down this point, atmospheric circulation. That means movement of the wind takes place because of this temperature variation. We will read it in the next class. How? Wind circulation takes place. Different types of wind movement, different types of atmospheric pressure we will read in the next class. Now, what about it is a lot of greenhouse gases. <laughs> Troposphere has greenhouse gases. What are the greenhouse gases? The most important greenhouse gas can you tell me? Very water vapor. Water vapor. Now, second one, carbon dioxide. Ka, NO, four. You can say, methane, CH four. Anything I am missing? Others are there. <coughs> Ammonia also, NH4. So, these are the most important uh, greenhouse gases. So, why do they say, why we call it the greenhouse gas? Why we say it is greenhouse gas? What is the greenhouse? Now, apart from that, it has aerosols. Huh? Aerosols. So aerosols are floating particles. 